I can't wait for you to turn your microphone off. <laughs> oh, it feels like saying hello to an old friend. Hi, galactic friend. <laughs> oh, I love your outfit. <laughs> well, I, this color, look, it matches something on your mushrooms. Obviously, that's what made me wear it. <laughs> yeah, right here. This one and that big one. <laughs> They're always amazing, those murals. Are they on fabric or is it a great big canvas? They're, they're actually fabric. They're material. Um, you can go on eBay and look up um, tapestries because they're labeled under tapestries. This thing, I think I paid $14 for it. It wasn't much. Wow. Oh, no, the tapestries are not expensive. And, and you can get them in all different sizes. There are thousands to choose from. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I make I make my own art, although this is an amazing Russian friend of mine. That's one of hers. But but to print it alone costs way more than like fourteen dollars a year. Yeah, I know. Mean, so I, I, I'm sure it's coming from China. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? I set up my space today so I could I could stand because I I thought about you. I love the way you always stand. It's so dynamic, you know. Yeah, I like standing. Sometimes I'll sit. With the way this room is, I, I do um, sit a lot because I'm not where I used to be. So I, I can sit here, but I really do like standing because when I get going and I have energy going through me, it's like, I just, you know, I'm very animated. <laughs> yeah, and you, you need to use your whole body, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. Do you know what I thought? Oh, well, we should start off. Obviously, I should give you a proper introduction. <laughs> I will. Okay. I, might do that. I might do that at the end, actually. Sometimes I tag it on. But I thought, well, of course, we just had a little eclipse. There is that. But you just I haven't watched your latest video on that. I know you did a live. Didn't wow. You? you really need to see that one. It's huge. Okay. It's huge. But, and it's got to do with everything. Well, yes. <laughs> you see, because I thought the follow on from that, because that's what I've been working on myself. is OK, well, how do we create new Earth then? Because, you know, we're all saying, yeah, you know, it's going to happen and new earth in the future. And, and this is what's terrible about now. And we've got the list and it grows ever longer. But we also mm -hmm. need to now exactly in every moment work on. How do we make yeah. this? And as you're such a visionary, I thought, ooh, could be fun. Yes, absolutely. Well, let me just fill in a little bit that you missed since you didn't see the last one. Um, I did a pre uh, prequel on my Patreon and I, I released um, half of what I knew there because I only had a two hour uh, slot that I was going to fill. And the other half was all questions because I allow the people on my Patreon to ask me anything and everything under the sun. And I'll dive deep into each question. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine my question box gets filled up? <laughs> mm -hmm. And then during the chat, they're also asking me stuff. So I only had an hour of actual hard information. But on Chris and Natra. I ended up giving the other half that I didn't get to talk about. And that part is our ascension. These bodies are ascending. April the 8th, 2017, we started ascending in our bodies. This is why our pineal and pituitary gland are bigger. Our sockets where our eyes used to be open and our skull are closing. Our throat is opening up. Our heart is now in the middle versus on the side when you used to do a pledge of allegiance on the side it's in the middle our liver has almost tripled in size for detoxing our gallbladder is now functioning for a detox system our spleen has gotten bigger and it's now detoxing and our appendix that used to be considered useless useless is now activated to take out all kinds of toxins all of these are toxin systems that have come online because of our ascension, just in the first seven years, to make the avatars into something new. So even if you got a lot of this, it isn't going to matter anymore. We are already past the precipice point where the majority of people who weren't going to make this are already gone. We just aren't aware of it. And the rest of us who are left in this next ascension, because it's a cycle of twelve year, uh, twelve sessions of seven so an increment of seven years seven times seven times seven times seven times seven seven years in a 12 cycle and the entire bodies are changing from a carbon-based to a 
more plasma based. So it's going to be like 5% crystal, 15% carbon, and all of the water will be changed over to plasma because plasma is a substance that will be able to dimension shift. So you'll be standing here, you'll be thinking, I want to go A, B, C, D, E, F, or G, and you take your bodies with us. You've always heard in the last when the last era of humanity that you'll be taking your bodies with you when we go to heaven, new earth, what so have let's, you. Let's key this in with a few moments from the past, you know, like that Elijah moment. That's one of our most famous ascension moments. Then we got the Jesus Christ. There's a whole lot of interesting oh, yeah. stories about that. But those are kind of probably our two most accessible how you take your body but also we've got the celestine prophecies that guy remember will he was ascension he had completed the ascension process and they were demonstrating that through the movies and the books um oh, i never saw that oh it's worth I, the book the, I, I, uh, the, I the book is great to read it, and i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to knuckle down when i can find some time and actually go watch that <laughs> You know, just just you know, sit one evening when you're exhausted and, and and just have it as your entertainment. It's a decent remake from the book, but it basically is just showing how the power of is it's it's a little bit uncomfortable the way they make it because it was a cheap production. You know, it wasn't a Hollywood. Oh. <laughs> Good, <laughs> but um, yeah, basically showing how the power of consciousness coming together would increase the field and therefore take you easy more easily into those those realms. But I was having a chat with someone today and um, lots of my friends are talking about, you know, the ascension and the parallel timelines and the splits and the higher frequency densities, actually. Um, and it's it's amazing. We create everything, of course, by thinking about mm -hmm. it, by feeling into it, by doing what you do, past, present, future mm -hmm. viewing. Um, but. There is one thing I keep finding with friends who are talking about it. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing it. And I feel this separation between here we are, you know, nice, tangible people, right? And then we kind of saying, yeah, we're going to be this sort of etheric and I'll be able to translocate and I'll be able to do this and that. I won't be able to eat. I don't need to eat. And I think, just like you said, the 12 octaves, like octaves, it's like music, isn't it? It's music because yeah. the whole yeah. universe yeah. is run on music. I'm a musician. And um, and so it's this gradual. So actually, you don't even know you're in it. Essentially, that's you right. Know, no that's one's it. like, "Oh my, my liver's just increased by thirty percent." I didn't realize that. You know. <laughs> yeah, because we can't see it. We are ignorantly unaware of it. We've just gone through a full seven years of the beginning of the ascension, and we don't even know it. Some of us are kind of getting it, but with each seven years. We are going to be changing the avatar because it takes seven years for your body, because these are biological machines, to replace itself. And in each replication of a replacement, new things will be coming online. So over time, all of a sudden, oh, my God, I'm not blind anymore. Why am I growing my hands and my arms back that have been lobbed off? Oh, I thought my gallbladder was taken out. I thought my appendix was taken out. I thought my tonsils were gone. They will all be coming back. We are being rebooted like a computer back to factory set. So let's talk about that because I've experienced, I had my tonsils out when I was 10 and I've grown those back because it was such a pain not having them. They're really important. So I grew those back right now. I'm, I'm well to say I'm angry at my dentist is probably the wrong word. I just don't even want to think about her. She just took out teeth took out a tooth and broke two okay she broke oh. two really important teeth so I'm never going back to her not until I find a really good dentist so I'm growing back my tooth you know it's really really damaged and I am positive that there is a way of doing that now that sounds like crazy tunes to most people doesn't it but <laughs> I am convinced that if I can bring my grow my tonsils I grew my breasts back I had none uh because I was a skinny little dude and, you know, it, it's you can change your body. So what about you? What have you noticed? Just because it's wonderful when we have vision and then practicality. That's right. That's that's perfect. Um, I've noticed that in the last seven years, I thought I was open before. Oh, my gosh. The first thing that I think happens is for a lot of people is this changes the concept 
the ability to start using your brain. And, you know, if you've watched anything that I talk about, which I, you might not have watched this because I haven't put it out on YouTube or anything or Odyssey, but I was talking about the lockdown chakra system. When our ascension happens, the chakras are going to fade out because they are a lockdown system. They are a straitjacket. They are governors because what they're doing is governing the ability to connect to your different parts of your brain. That's why we will also be having the ascension. Once the chakras start diminishing, which they are now going to start diminishing, all of a sudden parts of your brain that you never used before, which are attached to abilities, will come online. This is huge. Over a long period, like I think midway through, so this is uh, six, six segments of seven years, our mammalian part of our brain will be gone because that was artificially put in to keep you in fight and flight, fear. It oh, was a control the, mechanism. The reptilian part. Yes, yeah. the reptilian yeah. part, the mammalian part. That is artificial. Our entire brain will become a single full unit instead of being split where you're either left brain or right brain. No, you'll be full brain. And with your chakras going out, that full brain is going to be activated. And all of a sudden, I can just I don't know, manifest. I can start to move things with my mind, telekinesis. I can start hearing people's thoughts. All of this will start coming in with each seven years. With each seven years, different things will be put online. It's like, think about building an automobile from scratch. You got to start with the thing. I would add in because it's lovely to talk about telekinesis and I bet you did the same thing I did as a kid of can I move that lampshade you know with my mind you know and then mm -hmm. sort of I used to do that and then like okay that's cool I know I can do it let's do other things but what I find with my integrated brain is that if I want some information I can just get it now I've done Absolutely. that for years you know and and I that's why I do all my videos really to show how you can Access whatever you want, information. Right. But, but I've got this mad story, Sonia, which you probably appreciate because <laughs> I don't know. I just feel you have a little bit of the flair. I was living in a Georgian house, big, wide passageways, six bedrooms. That's big for an English house. And I was letting it out as Airbnb. And I had this sofa I just upholstered, wanted to take it up to the third floor on my own. So... Big staircase, the first one, yay, got it up easily, pulled it and so on. Then I had this little tiny twisty one to get it to the third floor. And it was impossible. And I just had to stop and say, okay, I don't know. I don't know how to do this anymore, but I know someone who does. Okay, guys, whoever wants to answer. And I just sent it out as a signal. And then I got, oh, use pulleys and use levers and um, use counterbalance and counterweight. And so instantly I was given the idea and I did it and I got that thing up. Totally impossible, you know, <laughs> men keep mentioning, how did you bring that up? Well, you know, so that's just a silly, crazy example of how you can, we when it's integrated, you just, you can just download information, whole packets. Of information. Places. Let me tell you what I saw when you were saying that when you did this because there's such a small part of us in these avatars you were tapping into your self because you have lived many incarnations and in some of your incarnations you learned how to use all of this and all you did was tap into the ether where you are being stored a lot of you and getting the information you already hold there's that's nothing right. we don't know. And that's <laughs> really important part to notice. I think that's such a, because people talk about, oh, my guides. And 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 then they talk about these, you know, <laughs> Lord Kutsumi and all these avatars. It's like, no, you know, just hang on. It's parts of you, parts of your soul, your spirit. You can call it what you want, but it's that. And you're just going, just knocking on the door to your past or your future or whatever. And I think that's important. Because it's very important. We're separating ourselves from this vast information field we could access. Well, the main thing is that one of the reasons, because you know that the truther community was very infiltrated in the very beginning. If you don't want people to wake up to Christ consciousness, which is that's what it's always been about, you discovering your Christ consciousness so you can be the all-powerful God you already are. Well, then I'm going to tell you to give your power away to all of these different entities, deities, so you don't realize you are God. <laughs> you are fractals of source. 
<laughs> Why do you think you're moving and breathing and thinking? <laughs> yeah. It's a way to give your power away. I'm going to invent all these things. Now, you have to go through these things instead of go inside of yourself and realize you have everything inside of you. You always did, but you were never told that. So you go outside of yourself looking for your deities and your angels. I got something to say about angels. Every it's single good. energy being is the angel. We are the angels. We are not matrix beings. We are not NPCs. We are the angels. That's why we have the fallen angels and we have the light angels. We're the light angels. We're all energy beings. And those are truly the angels. There's a whole lot of stuff about the angels, isn't there? And maybe yeah. we should go into that and the Elohim and so on and, the, you know, the dark and light and what that actually is. But, 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 but. I know you were, I think you were kind of similar to me. You were, you were born like a little girl awake and like, what are you talking about guys? That's what I sense with you. But do you, is there, was just because it helps people when they're kind of going, yeah, I feel that, 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 that does resonate what she says. I'm sure. Yeah. I think, and um, just to overcome the doubt, can yeah. you remember, or could you just pinpoint, take an example of where you realized, yeah, of course, this is what I am. Have you got that moment that you could tell a little story about that? Well, I was a little tiny child. I think I was like um, five, five or six. I wasn't that old. And I remember standing outside with my father and my mom. And we were looking, it was at night, and we were looking at the stars in Okinawa. Because my father was the military in the military, so we were stationed in Okinawa. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about the stars. And I started saying stuff like I do now at this age. And my dad and my mom just looked at me and my dad said, you're from outer space, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here is a six-year-old back in the days where those people knew absolutely nothing about nothing because they were so dumbed down and stuff is coming out of me. And I knew at that point, okay, everyone around me doesn't know Jack. <laughs> my parents who were supposed to know everything know they're they're like children to me i was six looking at them as children as little tiny empty-headed children so how did that you, how did you deal with it because did you decide to just sort of play the game until you could release more or or did well, you sort of decide to just store some of you for a while <laughs> actually i never put anything away I, I remember when I went to first grade and second grade and third grade and everybody was playing in the playground and I did like to go and do the monkey bars once in a while. And I thought, wow, this is what children do. And I would look at the children and think, oh, look at those adorable children. And I was a child myself, but I never thought of myself as a child. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would, it just, my mentality wasn't there to be a child. It was really odd. <laughs> Yeah, because you, you just decide, you, well, you're probably the force of your spirit just broke the, right, well, she's coming in to be human, let's put the catch of fades on her. It's like, what? <laughs> There's nothing on me. I'm sure you just blasted it open when you came through. Yeah, I did. Um, we need you. When, I was, yeah. <laughs> when, when I was actually born, I was abducted at birth. Um, my mom had me in a German hospital because my dad was stationed in Germany. My dad is German. Well, was it in Frankfurt? Was, Where was it? Because there were lots uh, of Germans there. Gelnhausen is, I was nowhere near a military base. So my mother had me in Gelnhausen, Germany. Yeah, I lived in Germany for years. That's why I wanted to know. Oh, <laughs> okay, Gelnhausen. So. so I was born there. And then as soon as I came out of my mom, they snatched me up. I don't even know if my mom, I, I, I think they let her see me for like two seconds. And then I was gone for two days. She was so disturbed. Her milk dried up. She thought I died. They didn't tell her anything. Then they brought me back and said, oh, no, she's okay. We, we thought there might be a blood issue, but no, 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 she's good. Mm. I, I mean, at birth, abducted at birth. <laughs> Well, because they must have been, I mean, you would think of the, um, let's just call it secret space program for want of a better word, but they would be always monitoring energy fluxes, weren't they? So you must have kind of shone like a little bright light on the board and say, we, oh, we better go find that. There's um, another character. Do you Have you read the Radu cinema books about inner earth tunnels and extraordinary? Oh. Yeah, I, I, I will send you the links later because I think you might be fascinated. They are amazing. But the guy who... Um, 
traverses between our dimension and inner earth dimensions frequently, called César. He was born with his umbilical cord was so strong they couldn't cut it. Oh my gosh. And and he was abducted by the military as soon as he was born as well. You know, basically kind of, we'll just look after you. Thank you very much. Um, really fascinating character. And I think you may you may resonate with them um, reading about his Oh, I'll have to check that out. No, I haven't. No. <laughs> Eight, eight amazing, very dense, incredible information books, all about what's going on in inner earth and and so on. So, I I like this very much. Ha. Huh. Okay. So let's go back to we've got we've got the angels and we've got the Elohim and we've got Elohim. I should say so people can hear. And we've got our creating our future earth. Now, if we've got these series of octaves that we're moving through, no doubt we're going to have various entities that lack the love that we have vying with that process so what would you say is our main strategy well so i will I, I will tell you this with each seven years since we're going to be getting new avatars i mean we can't see what's happened inside of us but it happened so with the next set of seven years we have new things geared for us we're going to be losing um a big part of our our shackles, I would call that our monetary systems. What happens when you no, no longer need to be a consumer and you are now a producer of everything that you need because you've learned how to manifest? These things are coming online for us and they're coming shortly. Some people are already doing it now. So I also will say this, with this ascension, people are ascending at different rates. Some people have ascended already into, we only had the first seven years, but in the seven years, there's room for quick achievement. So if you're on par, instead of being a cycle of 12 cycles, you could actually shorten it down to seven. So you could be at full ascension in seven cycles versus 12. When I say 12, that's for the masses. That's not for you and me, because we've already ascended on a lot of this stuff that other people can't do yet. Because of where we came from. <laughs> yes. So I hadn't even been able to talk about that because I ran out of time on Chris's channel because I went there for two hours and we were talking and I still couldn't get everything out. <laughs> it was like, there's just too much information. Mm -hmm. So 12 of seven years in the entire 12 cycles is for the common man, okay? Because it's going to take them that long to get to full ascension. Now, and depending our on planet who, should be on base 12 anyway. So the 12 yes. real resonance, it's important that we have that completion. Okay. Right. Now, this is where the individuality comes in and can bypass that system. If you're already on a higher frequency, it's like school. Some people can graduate and be in 10th grade and have the full education of a 12th grader, right? It's the same thing. If you're on a frequency already, you can, you're not bypassing, you're ascending faster. So people like me, people like you, we have this huge ability to take that 12 cycles and turn it into six cycles, five cycles. I don't think anybody goes past five cycles because that's, that's like, that's like lickety split. And, and would you suggest full ascension. so that we can, in a way, instigate the hundred monkey effect, you know, by, by being that resonant frequency you can yes. attract and you kind of pull along the juggernaut behind you to an extent. Yes. That's kind of teacher inspirational role. Yes, yes. We're like that little rock you throw into a pond and the ripples are enormous. I'll throw a little rock, but it'll ripple the entire pond. <laughs> because that's how frequency works, just like that. Even movement is a form of frequency, obviously. But yeah, so some of the things I see coming online are the monetary system completely falling away. Our constitution, not just for the United States of America, but for the entire snow globe is going to change. We will no longer carry an institution where a group of people are controlling the world, but going into a natural law constitution, which is from a higher power. Natural law will then become the new constitution of the new earth. And that means you have a right to a home, you have a right to food, you have a right to clothing, you have a right to shelter, you have a right to exist, you have a right to have your own opinions, 
and you have a right for others not to take anything from you. These are all natural laws. I would say this is, that's one of the bigger fatter lies, isn't it? You know, every time I go and suggest something which is intuition based into a learning institution, they mm -hmm. say, oh no, no, we must have structure. Otherwise it will be chaos. And of course, structure <laughs> means one or two people decide without everyone else what it's going to be. And yeah. And I'm having to, I, I usually step away from those conversations, realize, okay, I can't get into those minds. But if you actually observe a group of, let's say children, and there is an issue, a, a bird got a broken wing, for example, and you've got 12 kids gathered around it. It's not chaos. No. It's, it's natural order. You get beauty, you get generosity, you get help, you get concern, you get, what can I do? organization it is magnificent and that's the big fat lie that has been taught us that oh no if we don't if there are no structures that tell you what to do you won't know it'll be chaos it'll be a nightmare you'll be killing each other you'll be throwing rocks at each other and that is rubbish yes it is <laughs> it's also in. a way to, to straight jacket you do what i say do what i think i own you You'll do what's going to benefit me in the long run. And I'm going to sell it to you that this is good for you. Yeah. Let's package it. It's good for you that everything traverts back to me. And I think of the seven deadly sins. And I always think of sloth. Sloth is where you're not doing much and you're feeding off of everyone around you because you've enslaved everyone. And what is that? Sloth is one of the seven deadly sins. And there goes your major structure because it's slothing. It's not doing much, but what it's doing is consuming everything from everyone. It's quite amazing how we still, in these so-called alternative communities, feed into that. I would, I had a friend, of course I'm not gonna name, but during lockdown, and I was, I really enjoyed a lot of her because her information, she'd been working on past life regressions and things like that for a long time, talking with entities, you know, right up my street until I realized that she was one of those, just because of because of probably her genetic inheritance. She was yeah. the vampiric orientation, right? She would just suck off everyone else brilliantly and everyone fed into that. It's like, oh yes, we love and obey you. Give us more words to, you know, oh guide us. And, <laughs> and, that's, and that's a big thing in the alternative community to get people into that place of this is why I wanted to talk to you about New Earth because it's this thing of I am allowed to be free. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's that's the biggest brainwash, isn't it? Yeah, it it, it is. This is what I think about the New Earth with the bodies ascending. We're going, the new earth to me is the negativity going to the wayside. It's going to be extinct like the dodo bird. As we keep progressing, they'll have less and less shackles on us. And the new earth will be what we're creating day by day through this full ascension. It's not like it's, we're going to, oh, we're in heaven. No, we have to make it. <laughs> Day by day, we're going to have to make it. It's going to become easier with the body ascensions when you no longer require certain things. All of a sudden, negativity doesn't have the hold on you. Oh, my God. You, you can't uh, bribe me with, I don't know, making my food so expensive I can't afford it anymore and putting me into the poorhouse. Or you can't control me anymore because all of a sudden my brain is now working and I can work out your little dirty details and I'm not going along with the agenda. The biggest thing is waking up. This was the whole thing about the awakening. It was waking up to the crap we've been into for centuries and realizing we are slaves. We are prisoners. We are captives. And, and, <laughs> and I mean, that is something broken. That, that, you know, people say, oh, but, you know, how do you wake up more people? Because they don't want to know that they are slaves. It's like, don't be ridiculous. Of course I'm not. You know, how, how could I possibly what? You know, because you challenge everyone on the basis, on the very ground foundation. Um, what you said right at the beginning of we kind of we've now made this jump. or We're now on, you know, in uh -huh. the ascension. Mm -hmm. and probably most people who are going to have left have kind of left now. So it's yeah. just, you know, some leaders at the front who like to kind of get into it. And then this tidal wave of humanity. 
-hmm. moving past. But part of that tidal wave of humanity are the people who are still saying, don't be ridiculous, of course I'm free. And then they just pay every bill and every fine and accept everything. So what do you what do you say about those? I do know that. I don't know if you've watched my videos, but I had just discovered oh, that ago <laughs> about the quadrants and that when we came into this last quadrant, we came with our bodies. And this is where we go up and out, because I said, if you made this, if you made this last quadrant, you were the few and the far in between. It would be like a camel getting through the eye of a needle if you made it. How many of us are now NPCs because they didn't make this quadrant? They're still left back in quadrant three. And so for the ones that are here, because this is a simulation to make us not feel all alone, there really are not that many of us left, not real energy beings anyway. Now, AI, this sim, yes, they are a form of energy, but they're not sustainable energy where we are a fractal of God. We are sustainable energy. Well, what happens when you're in a reality where you look around and what if you were the only one left? What if it was only one real energy being to 5,000 NPC shells? How lonely would you be? What would get done? Who's going to make the food? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Who's going to run the services? This is why this quadrant has so many NPCs in it, because somebody still has to do the things behind the scenes to make this reality still function. When we realize that this is a dream, and we start ascending and we realize that we don't work like that anymore. You will start seeing the NPCs going out of re our reality. The only thing that holds them here is our belief system. We believe we need these people. We believe they got to go out and plow the fields and make the food and do this because this is this is what we believe. You're going to find that most people that you can't change, that you can't do anything with, they're NPCs. They're running on a program. When what I'm finding coming what I'm finding is with some of my friends who I've loved, who had alive spirits, but because we've pushed past a barrier that they can't, won't because of mental intrusions, accept. It's not that they're NPCs, but now they are literally controlled. They're controlled entities yeah. because the fear has allowed yeah. another essence to come in. So, I mean, you could put them in the same box oh, yeah. sadly, as the NPC, but I would call it, you know, it's a live spirit that is now had control taken over and and that's really you know that was sad for me i don't i'm sure you've probably experienced similar i've i've yes i have um i it was about a year and a half ago and i had gone to france and i was walking in this park to go to the woods well actually the forest and we had sat on a bench um to take a little rest because it took us a while to get there because we were walking everywhere and i saw this guy this, this random French dude, and he was walking up to the tree and he was looking at the leaf. And I was like, what the hell? And then all of a sudden I saw behind him attached his energy being, and it was slumped over just being drug along. And it's like, and it shocked the shit out of me. Cause I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what am I seeing? Cause mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting it. It mm -hmm. wasn't a part of my reality. I'd never seen this before. And it hit me to the core, like somebody sucker punched me as hard as they could. And took my breath away. And I was telling Arthur, he's like, tell me what you see. And then I was telling him and he, the guy was walking and it was just pulling his energy being behind him because it's still attached. And something else is running the, 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 the shell, you know, and I'm now calling those NPCs because they're not in control of the shell anymore. They're not. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so people, you know, people go, OK, well, who is in control? You know, entities. But there are so many different kind of a vast array of different entities that it could be aren't there I would say mm -hmm. I mean different they have different feels about them and also this is maybe another point um to to investigate a little bit because you'll be so good at this is there are people and I know this my beloved man who is extraordinary um mm -hmm. but sometimes he gets bashed by God knows how many levels of entity all the time because he's right at the front of everything. And sometimes he gets knocked out, not not knocked out, but he does get taken over for a while and then he has to push them out again. So we do have that kind of barrage on the front line as well of yeah. non-soul entity attempting to stop the pathway. Yeah. 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 
Um, yeah, I see that too. I had that with um, my husband. Um, I'm going through a divorce, I've been going through a divorce, but um, back in 2016, he died on the table. Yeah. His energy being left that shell and something else came in. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, have you ever heard of walk-ins? Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's more permanent. What your person is dealing with, your man, <laughs> um, is temporary. Yeah. And there are things you can do to stop that from happening. You can shore up your body. You can um, you can create organite fields by you can wear like copper and crystals together like bracelets or something. And what it does is it strengthens your biofield because your biofield is 80 percent of your health. And since we can't fit all the way into these carbon shells because we're actually much more than the carbon shells can contain so most of us is sitting on the outside of us 80 percent of us um you can do things like wear some jewelry you can have mantras that you can even say i will not no one shall penetrate my my energy being no one shall penetrate my carbon-based shell no one shall i do not permit anything to enter inside of me and you might have to keep doing this until you become so confirmed into this um, complete statement that it stands as a contract with yourself. And you're yeah. literally making a contract that this body shall not be used for anything other than what I deem it for. And nothing is allowed to come in unless I allow it in. Yeah. And you have to be very clear about what is you and what isn't you in that state. Right. And I think that's where he's still, he's still, you know, he's on that part, but he's still kind of edging because it is fascinating to watch how, okay, right, we got rid of that lot. And then the new, some new influence because he's right at the front of what's going on right now. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that is an, in, you know, it's an, is it a battle? Do we call it a battle? We um, are at war. 